Since I got Deathstroke at three stars over a year ago, my solo raids experience has changed completely, and I want to share what I've learned about getting the most out of him so far to help you get the absolute best out of your Deathstroke. We'll go over the basics, synergies, modifiers to take note of, and then explore the nuances of his full potential. Then we'll talk about how to properly allocate the stat slots we have available. There will also be an additional tip that will absolutely take your Deathstroke experience to the next level. I know it did for me, so keep an eye out for that. Deathstroke is a three-star base legendary percentage health damage dealer. That sounds like a mouthful, but it just means that he's unlockable at three stars minimum and that he is able to deal a percentage of the opponent's current health, just like our familiar King can with his special three. This technically works in all modes, but its value really shines forth in raids, and so does Deathstroke. So let's quickly go through his passives. Expert Mercenary. Deathstroke gets some pretty sweet buffs based on the special he uses. They normally last 8 seconds each. Steady Improvement is a buff to Expert Mercenary's duration for each time it's activated. Caps out at a 100%, which means Expert Mercenary buffs can last up to 16 seconds at 3 stars. Weak Spots. Deathstroke gains a bit of power when he deals a critical hit. These passives contribute to his role and usability, especially at three stars and without gears, where we lose out on a lot of stats. It's really, really hard to survive long enough to deal considerable damage, and these passives go towards making that experience a lot more cohesive. The centerpiece of Deathstroke's kit is his special two, which deals percent health damage. When he uses it successfully, he also activates his Expert Mercenary passive, which allows him to heal himself with his attacks, including any percent health damage that is dealt within the buff period, for a period of time. Note that the Special 2 will deal the percentage damage even if it's blocked, in which case, its damage will be reduced, so we don't want that. It will still deal the percentage health damage so long as it connects one hit during the whole special. So don't panic if you're a little out of reach for the first few hits, or if you're blinded at the time. The total amount of percentage health damage that he can deal in a fight is 36% of the boss's health from the start of the fight. The further you get in solo raids and league raids, the larger the health pools of bosses, and other damage dealers simply don't scale exponentially like that. So, just like other percent damage dealers, Deathstroke's value grows dramatically with your progress. The further along you are, the more value you'll get out of him. In keeping with that, you usually want to use Deathstroke where the bosses have very high health and the units you have available have other bosses to be used against, or they just do too little damage to do much to such a huge health pool. Or the boss has a modifier that makes it hard to deal good damage with your other teams, like everybody's favorites, Resilient, Cloaked, and Chaos. Or perhaps you have a high damage pip that can clean up, but need a good opening pip. Now for the basic setup for your Deathstroke. You want your Deathstroke's level to be maxed out at 70, his special 2 to also be at level 70, and in case you forgot, level his passives to 3. With that out of the way, all we really have left are 3 talent slots and our artifact slot. They're extremely important. But to understand how best to use them, we need to learn quite a bit about playing Deathstroke, so strap in. To start off, here is a quick overview of our two main goals with Deathstroke. We want to stay alive, and we want to make sure we deal all of our percentage health damage as quickly as we can. With that in mind, let's take a look at teammates that synergize well with our three-star Deathstroke to meet those goals. We need some survivability with Deathstroke. He starts out gearless and defenseless, with a base HP of just below 10k at level 70, there's no way he's able to survive well enough off of only his expert mercenary heals, so he appreciates teammates that give him defense and health. Arkham Knight Batman is simply Deathstroke's best pairing on this front. Ironic, isn't it? Since they're usually enemies. He gives a hefty amount of both defense and health to Deathstroke. There's also other units like Classic Superman, Armored Superman, and even Multiverse Supergirl too, that give defense to the team. Brainiac also fits in here with his basic attack damage cap and significant health buff. 
health teammates are somewhat in a rough spot for Deathstroke. They have a lot of value in League raids, but in solo raids, it really depends on whether you actually need more health or not. Since after normal mode, you usually gain significant amounts of health from the solo raid artifacts you'll be equipping. In my experience, health teammates have been useful when facing opponents with abnormally high damage output, have armor-piercing specials, or are hard to combo interrupt. A good example of this is Suicide Squad Enchantress, especially when she happens to be in the fourth or fifth tier of a solo raid. Arkham Knight Batman, Brainiac, and Classic Superman are the two standout units here. Honorable mention goes to Darkseid. He can also be very useful with his shields and bombardment that can interrupt specials and help to maintain the flow of the fight. Deathstroke's Special 2 costs 4 power bars by default. Since our main goal is getting out those Special 2s and quickly, having teammates that help you access more effective energy is very useful. Power Girl and Silver Doctor Fate both reduce power bar cost by 2 bars at 4 stars. They're great for helping Deathstroke use his Special 2 more quickly and consistently, since it costs half the original of 4 bars. However, note that they lose value when your Deathstroke has a reasonable amount of crit chance and can consistently generate enough power for his Special 2 every combo with his passive weak spots. On the flip side, they gain a lot of value when up against resilient or cloaked bosses. Resilient bosses are immune to critical hits, while cloaked bosses have increased crit resistance. So, weak spots simply won't work in those cases. We also have Emerald Green Lantern, who has a chance to grant power bars on tag-in, and Atrocitus, who has a chance to steal power bars. Now, while both of these are really helpful, they require you to tag out Deathstroke, which just takes time since the supports are on field instead, so I wouldn't call them first-rate options. But there are cases where you may want to use them, especially if Dr. Fate and Power Girl are otherwise occupied. Closely related to that, we have crit chance supports like Silver Bane and Silver Batman. They play a big part in making power generation less of a concern with Deathstroke by helping him trigger weak spots more often. Now, obviously they lose a bit of value when you haven't already covered his survivability, or when you have reasonably high crit chance already. Honorable mention goes to Speed Force the Flash, who gives him a lot of fast attack chance for cases where you've got his survivability covered. For instance, against tier one or two bosses who don't hit quite as hard as the others in general. As a fun inclusion, we also have Red Hood. His time extension can be a nice thing to have to squeeze out a couple or so more special twos where the situation allows for it. We've already covered resilient bosses a bit, but you'll want to have a power cost reduction unit here. If you can't have one for some reason, going with Emerald Green Lantern or Atrocitus can help you get off your special twos more quickly. When healing is disabled on bosses that have null field, survival is much more difficult with a three-star death stroke. You'd want to prioritize defense and health more here. Protective Screen doesn't affect his overall percent health damage, but it does cap out the 5.49% health damage which you'd deal per Special 2 at level 70. You'll need to use the Special 2 more times than usual to make sure you get all the damage out here. For bosses with Protraction, you don't want to have to tag out, so Crit Chance and Fast Attack Chance supports can gain a bit of value depending on the fight and your build. If a boss has Contamination, you can run him with Jon Stewart Green Lantern if he's available. He directly counters hazards by giving the team an immunity to their effects and reducing the damage you take from them. For fights with Chaos, you'd want his teammates to die as soon as possible and play him solo. So don't forget to remove their gears. There's also a bit of a case to use just one teammate here, if you can manage it. Annihilation. This one's rather uncommon. In fact, only two bosses have this modifier so far. They are Boss Darkseid from Tier 5 of Dawn of Apocalypse and Boss Brainiac from Rise of Krypton Tier 3. Basically, you want supports that can drain the boss's power or make them generate it slower. Even stealing bars works. All to make sure the boss's super move doesn't come before you can deal as much damage as you can. Usually, you're going to want Ace Green Arrow or Multiverse Green Arrow on the team because they are good at power draining. There's also Brainiac in Phase 4 of League Raids, but 
Deathstroke is not well suited there at all to begin with. By the way, you'd get the best experience using a 3-star Deathstroke in League Raids if you use him against Captain Cold with health, power cost reduction, and or defense teammates. And now for the absolute most important modifiers. These ones utterly turn Deathstroke off, basically rendering him useless, and they are abilities disabled when Special 2 is disabled, and adaptation if Special 2 is negated. Now, thankfully, these are relatively rare in solo raids, but for reference, here are the bosses you need to be wary of with these modifiers. Primal Swamp Thing in Tier 4 of the Last Contract, Justice League Cyborg in Tier 5 of the Last Contract, Energized Starfire in Tier 3 of Ancient Judgment, Ace Green Arrow in Tier 3 of Kingdom of Madness, and Justice League Aquaman in Tier 5 of Rise of Krypton. Reading boss modifiers before a fight is important, so you know what to expect, and can plan out how to properly deal with challenging modifiers or even the fight itself, if it has peculiar systems in place, like is usually the case for main bosses of each tier in solo raids. Now we need to talk about the key to Deathstroke's full potential, Nora's Snow Globe, frequently called NSG. You can get it from the On Ice solo raids as a guaranteed drop every time you complete the fifth tier. Nora's Snow Globe has quite the list of effects and is undoubtedly one of the best free artifacts available. For every successful special, you heal up some of your max health and gain a permanent attack buff. Also, and this is the really important part, when you get knocked out, it tags you out and starts healing you for some of your health, and then tags a clone of you in. The clone scales off of your stats and base kit, excluding passives, which means that it can still use your specials, and the specials retain whatever additional effects are tied to it. It does not register as a teammate, it cannot be tagged back in after getting tagged out by any means, and you get only two clones per match. This is absolutely insane for a 3-star Deathstroke. More healing and clones. Now, for Deathstroke, this is particularly relevant, because his Special 2's ability to deal percent health damage is not tied to any passives and is a direct result of the Special itself. So the clones can also do percent health damage of their own, which takes into account the max health at their creation. The Ice Clones can be healed, technically. But since Expert Mercenary is tied to his passive, not just his skill, it doesn't work on the clones. Usually there's no way to heal them once they're out on the field. Every new clone coming in will have their own pool of 36% health damage to be dealt. Which means it's theoretically possible to deal 36% health damage three times in one fight. However, this doesn't mean you can deal 108% if you somehow get off all the special twos that count towards that. His full potential with NSG is actually 73.7%, because the percent health damage is always based on the current HP of the boss, which continuously drops due to taking percent health damage. So we end up with around 73% in an ideal situation, which is nearly three quarters of a boss's health, and that is just incredible. Imagine dealing around 1.5 billion in higher heroics with just a 3-star unit. However, the reality is that it would be very rare to be able to reach the max potential. NSG's unique interaction doesn't come without its own nuances. And there's quite a bit of them, too. Let's break them down together. You need to get knocked out to trigger a clone. And remember? We want to stay alive with Deathstroke to get off his full percent damage, too. Typically, this won't be much of a problem. NSG has plenty of defensive utility, and Deathstroke's Expert Mercenary helps out on that front as well. When you're at three stars and without gear, getting knocked out is the easy part. The main thing here is to be mindful of when and how you actually get knocked out. You want to manage it best you can and, if possible, ensure that the boss uses its super move before the clone comes in, which leads us to our next point of concern, surviving with the clones. The health of the clones scales off of Deathstroke's own health, but the scaling itself increases with every level on NSG, going from 22% at level 1 to 40% at level 10. That may not seem like much, but remember that the more you progress through solo raids, the more passive stats you'll get on your artifacts, which means more health on Deathstroke. What you don't get more of, though, is defense. It's not really clear whether the clones inherit Deathstroke's defense stat, too, 
but it sure looks that way to me. All this to say, you would appreciate sorting out your defense first more, the further along you are. Also, block and combo interrupt as much as you can. Sometimes the best move is to back off and use a special two as the boss approaches forward. Usually, a forward jump from the boss will net you a free, unblocked special two. Combo interrupting at the corner is usually a good idea, if you can pull it off consistently. It's a useful skill to learn, both for Deathstroke and the clones. The clones aren't teammates. Passives that apply to the team, like those of Dr. Fate or John Stewart Green Lantern, will not apply to the clones. However, effects that don't necessarily apply to the team, such as Atrocitus Power Steel and Emerald Green Lantern's power gain that both trigger on tag in, will still trigger when the clones tag in. It's important to know this because it helps to inform how you will build and play your Deathstroke, which we will get to in a bit. Finally, Running NSG on Deathstroke will need proper time management and skill to make the best use of it. Every fight lasts three minutes at a baseline. So what we want here is to try and get out as many special twos as we can, as fast as we can. Most of the time, this would be do all of Deathstroke's damage. Take super move, get knocked out, first clone comes in, use as many special twos as possible, get knocked out again, use as many special twos as possible. But sometimes things can change. The main thing here is just to be adaptable. This is that situation where Red Hood can gain quite a bit of value, so long as your bases are covered. For a feel for how you did if you used NSG, I'd say 50% damage is good, 60% is great, and anything above that is just incredible. Sometimes, situations may arise where you have the opportunity to use 2% damage dealers in one pip against a boss. In such cases, you want to make sure that the other percent damage dealer is one that can quickly deal their percent health damage, like Ruler of Kandak Black Adam. The better and more skillfully you manage the timer, the better your experience. Most of the time, though, you will have your hands more than full, trying to get maximum value out of Deathstroke alone with NSG. NSG is great for Deathstroke, but there are many other great use cases for it making its value indisputable. But I will go over that in another video. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. But what if you don't have NSG? Well, for one thing, do your best to get it. It's really good. But there are some artifacts that can help improve your experience with Deathstroke, especially if you don't have NSG yet. One of those is the God Killer. It can steal some of the attack and disable the block of the boss. So it's really helpful towards both survival and getting your special twos out more easily. You can get it from completing Deathstroke's own solo raid, The Last Contract. You can also equip the KRM on him as a failsafe, in case you happen to get knocked out during the fight before meeting your goal, which is rather common when you have lower passive stats or in normal mode. Nth Metal Armor can be good too, when you've got high passive stats. Although, by that point, you already probably have an NSG, and at level 1, NSG is better than all the other options, even with them at level 10. So be sure to try and complete normal mode of on ice when it's available again. Now we'll take all we've learned so far and decide how to allocate our three talent slots. It's pretty straightforward, figuring out what you need the most. You need to take a look at your roster to see which of the potentially good teammates you have and see if they're free from any pips you regularly use them in. For instance, taking a look at my account, I happen to have Arkham Knight Batman and Brainiac, who I don't need in any of my strong pips. They give a lot of defense and health from their passives, so I'll probably be looking for more crit chance for better power generation, and then I'll try to get those on the talents. That's the sort of process you go through in determining what exactly to have on your talents. It will usually be a mix of defense and crit chance. Also, you want them all to be epic talents. But if you don't have the resources for that at the moment, every stat helps. So don't worry too much about it and try to balance out the rest of what you need. Now getting a good balance of stats is not an easy task at all, but one thing that can help you take your death stroke to a whole new level is getting one or two gears from his power-up chest. Trust me, I did so sometime last year and I don't remember the last time my death stroke pip failed. 
Of course, I'm not saying that one gear will make you indestructible, but gear slots can actually hold a lot of stats. And for Deathstroke especially, going from zero gears to just one will definitely change the landscape of options you have. There's just going to be a lot more cohesion with him. It doesn't matter which you get either. The least useful piece here is the arms gear, since it gives attack. And even then, the four slots you can get from leveling it all the way to 80 are incredibly valuable, essentially fixing your crit chance or defense completely and easily. When you combine those additional slots to the process and considerations we've talked about, you can make a build that helps you get the most out of your Deathstroke. Here's how my Deathstroke looks. I got the Assault Rifle, which gives crit chance, and I gave him some defense and more crit chance. He ends up with around 58% defense and max crit chance with the talents too. That defense is somewhat enough to comfortably run him with NSG as you're constantly healing. So while I usually run him with Arkham Knight Batman, my third slot is rather open. I may use Brainiac, Red Hood, Speed Force the Flash, Dr. Fate, Darkseid, the list goes on. He also happens to have some resistances from my NSG. I got really lucky when upgrading to level 6, I hope you do too. Resistance is not as important for a 3-star Deathstroke as something like Defense, but if you can fit in a couple of epic resistances on your talents, you'll have an easier time dealing with stuff like contamination and other similarly annoying situations. We've explored Deathstroke's kit, synergies, and more importantly, how to prioritize and manage them. Remember to pay close attention to the modifiers and also peculiarities of each boss. Experiment with different setups to find a build you're comfortable with. If you've learned a thing or two or enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like down below and let me know in the comments. Remember, progress in Injustice 2 isn't just about your roster, but how well you understand and use the resources you have. If you'd like to learn more about that, then be sure to subscribe and check out my future content.